What's going on everyone? Welcome along to Arsenal Fan TV. So following what was a catastrophic performance in the Champions League on Tuesday night, we've now got an incredibly difficult game in which to respond against a Villa side away that have had an incredible start to the season. Villa of course are going to be going into this game on the back of a 1-0 victory over Liverpool. As well as that, they've had a bit more time to prepare for this game as we did have that game on Tuesday night. And they're going to be going into it believing that they can get all three points. And if Paul Lambert's got any sense about him, he's going to look at that Arsenal side and he's going to expose where the weaknesses were for us, which are quite frankly in the middle of the park where we were just completely outclassed by Borussia Dortmund on Tuesday night. Now, I think we've got an excellent opportunity to respond in this game against Aston Villa, but it's not going to be easy. Villa, of course, brimming with confidence. It's probably the worst time to go and play them when they're right up there at the top of the table and their players are performing to such an exceptional standard. The likes of Bong Lahore playing some incredibly good football, and a player who could probably do a job for us at the moment, Carlos Sanchez in that holding midfield role, looks a very formidable player and someone that is going to stop our attacking prowess if we have any attacking prowess in this game, which we didn't particularly show in that game against Dortmund. One thing that we do have to learn from that game against Dortmund, um, and we should, be, we should be learning it from Dortmund themselves, we have to start games quickly. You look at the way Dortmund started that game on Tuesday night, the way they ran at us with the likes of Immobile, Aubameyang, so much pace going forward. Mkhitaryan was another one who was incredible, incredibly good at doing that. We have to learn from that. We have to be doing that ourselves. The amount of times that we just played a ball around our own half, trying to do build-up play, it's not working for us at the moment. And we've got to be learning new ways to adapt to the game. And another thing that uh, Borussia Dortmund did incredibly well, closing so many players down at once. You had about five men on one person at each time. Now, in some respects, this does leave areas of the pitch very open at times. However, I think the way Dortmund did it, it was just such a great, great spectacle to watch them do that. The way they closed down players incredibly quickly. That's something we should be trying to do, especially in a game like this. Get Villa under pressure. Get, get them on the ropes early on shake them up a bit and hopefully we can we can get a goal in this one. I, I, I want to see a good performance from Arsenal. I think we've had what one win in the last six games which for, for Arsenal Football Club isn't good enough and we play teams that we you know we, we should be beating at times um, and that result against Dortmund the performance just emulated everything that went wrong for us last season against the big sides. Aston Villa maybe not, they're not regarded as a big side but they're certainly a good team certainly a fresh team um, Paul Lambert brought in a whole range of new tactics this season bringing in a whole host of new players over the summer so it's certainly not going to be easy especially away from home and we've still got a couple of injuries for this game and like I said, we've got to put in a good performance. I'm expecting big things from Arsenal. Things have to change in this game. If we put in another, what, what frankly was a garbage performance on the other night, we've got to be putting in a solid performance which will show the rest of the Premier League that, that the other night was a fluke and it has to be a fluke and things have to change. I think we've got to change the formation for this one. And I think we've also got to drop some certain players, which I'll get into a bit later in the video. But looking at Aston Villa, the last time we played them away from home, I think we beat them 2-1. Goals coming from Jack Wilshere. And uh, I think I don't know if I can't quite remember if he got two or if someone else got another one. But that was a um, fairly good performance from Arsenal. But we did see certain attacking prowess from Aston Villa. And they did, uh, they did look very formidable at times. And of course, we did have that horrible 3-1 defeat to them at home at the start of last season's Premier League, which which was a really horrible result, but I'm hoping nothing like that will go on. But they could punish us like that. If we put in the performance that we showed the other night, that could happen again. Villa are no mugs. They're not. They're going to expose our weaknesses. Paul Lambert will have looked at where we are vulnerable, and the likes of a Bong Lahore will expose that space. Andreas Weiman will expose that space between the attackers and the midfielders, and, and um, the attackers and the defenders, should I say. And with someone like Arteta doing that in a 4-1-4-1 on his own, it will get exposed to the maximum yet again. That, just, that space between the, 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 four cent, the, the four defenders and the four attacking players in the 4-1-4-1 is huge because Arteta brings nothing to that space. And even someone like Fabian Delft, who Villa have got, is excellent in that role. He did, I thought he played fairly well in that role for England, even though maybe he was deployed in a slightly more wider role. But he does it for Villa and he does it to a great standard. Delph is a player that we're going to have to watch in this game. He's someone that will exploit that space. He'll have looked at Arteta and he'll have seen that he can outmuscle him in every single aspect. So he's certainly a guy that we've got to watch. And I think 
Um, looking at Arsenal, we've got to change things in this game. Like I said, got to change the formation. I want to see us reverting back to a 4-2-3-1 that we used last season. Although, in the back of my mind, I can see Veng persisting with a 4-1-4-1 come May, which uh, is, quite frankly, a fairly scary prospect. And I'm hoping that he will see sense and revert back to a 4-2-3-1 formation. And in that formation, I'm going to go with Chesney and goal. Callum James are right back. Mertzaka, Koscielny. Gibbs, Wilshere, Ramsey, Sanchez, Ozil, Chamberlain and Danny Welbeck. Now there are a lot of things that I have changed about that team. First of all, I want to see Oxlade Chamberlain starting games. He has been excellent whenever he's come on a pitch. He's brought spark, energy, flair to every single game he's played in. Um, bar maybe Everton away where he wasn't quite up to scratch. But that was quite a while ago and ever, ever since he's come off the bench he's looked so energetic, so full of pace. I think he's got to start this game and play Ozil in the central role. The thing with that, with playing Ozil in a central role, if he doesn't perform there, then he's got no excuses whatsoever. Um, I would expect him to have a good performance playing in that central role. He's, quote, he's been quoted as saying that's where his best performances come. Live up to your name, Ozil, and please put in a good performance for us. We want, every Arsenal fan wants to see Ozil do well, as a fact. Um, I've heard people mentioning you know, whispers of Andre Arshavin. If he's played out on the wide, on the wide side of the pitch, then... Um, that could very well happen, but if we're going to waste this guy on the wing when we paid 42 and a half million for the, one of the best playmakers in the world, it just doesn't make sense. And like I was saying, putting him in that in that uh, centre attacking midfield role with Chamberlain on the left, Sanchez on the right, and Danny Welbeck in front of him, he's got pace and runners all around him. So absolutely no excuses for Ozil if he does play in that central midfield centre attacking midfield role. But in the back of my mind, again, I have a horrible feeling he's going to be played out on the wing, which is a waste of a position for us. Absolute waste of a position. It's going to damage Ozil's confidence as well, and he's going to be at the heart of critics, which I don't want to see. I want him in the midfield role. It's, it's where he plays best, and it just it, it wastes an opportunity for someone like Chamberlain, Campbell, even Cazorla to play in that wide role, where, frankly, they're going to put in a much better performance and bring more to the team, whereas Ozil, in a wide role, won't. But in a central attacking midfield role, he certainly will bring assists and hopefully a few goals to the team this season. He has to play there. But like I've said in previous videos, I think a lot of his positioning hinges on whether, um, on whether or not Walcott comes back into the team anytime soon, which, which hopefully he will. But looking at some other players that I haven't included in my lineup, Thomas Rosicki, Kazola, Campbell, these players have every single right to say they deserve to be starting games because players such as Aaron Ramsey haven't stepped up to the plate as of yet. He needs to have a good performance. Um, and Thomas Rosicki is someone I'm a big admirer of. Someone that is, again, another workhorse like Alexi Sanchez. You wouldn't think he's about 33 years old. Absolute uh, quality player with a great work, e work ethic. And I'd love to see him start this game if someone like Aaron Ramsey was to be dropped. And he has every right to start the game. So does someone like Joel Campbell. Quality player, had an amazing World, Club, uh, World Cup. He's being wasted on the bench. I think we'll see him in that game against Southampton in midweek. Um, next week, but he does. He is someone that probably deserves to be starting this game. But the reason I've chose that lineup is because I don't think it's going to do Ozil any good if we drop him. Although in some respects, no one should be guaranteed a starting eleven in the starting eleven spot in this team. Um, Kazola has every right to say he should be playing in that attacking role uh, as Ozil hasn't been performing too well. But I think it's only fair we give Ozil a chance as we haven't even seen him deployed in a centre attacking midfield role this season. And I've left Arteta and Flamini out because I think we're better off playing without a DM at the moment because they're not bringing anything to the, to the side. Flamini doesn't really defend particularly well because he drops in too deep bet between the, uh, the centre-halves and then he doesn't track players. As we saw last weekend um, when he just let Aguero run past him, Arteta can't keep up to the pace of the game. He makes silly little errors that cost us that, that moment in the Dortmund game where he just let the ball run past him. What is that about? You're our centre defensive midfield player. But again, I'm not blaming Arteta because he's not a defensive midfielder and he's getting on a bit. He shouldn't be having to have such a formidable role in the team, especially in a position that he's not overly comfortable with. And another thing, Abu Diaby, he could be back for this game. Uh, he's played quite a few games with the under-21s. If he's back in the team, why not throw him in there? He's certainly going to bring more to the side than someone like Arteta will. Great physical presence, someone that will be able to go head-to-head -head with Fabian Delph, and he'd be a great asset to the team to have him in this game. He's someone that arguably could do that 4-1-4-1 formation, but again, that's a horrible formation. I don't want us using it anymore, and I think we'd be much better off with Diaby alongside someone like Ramsey or Wilshire. But I have gone with the Ramsey and Wilshire pivot in this one. I'd like to see how it performs. 
Um, the idea that I've got in the back of my mind is that one of them, uh, one of them attacks, does the box-to-box -box midfield role, and they alternate doing that kind of thing, whereas one of them sits and the other one pushes up the pitch because they're both very good at doing that role. They're both centre midfielders. They should be able to perform that role to a good standard, and I think they'd uh, like, like to play alongside each other. And Ramsey hasn't put in a good performance yet in that 4-1, 4-1 formation, and I want to see him at his best where he played in that position last season in the box-to-box -box midfield role alongside uh, a more sitting midfielder. So hopefully, hopefully we can respond from that defeat against Dortmund. We have to put things right. We can't show that we're going to be whipping boys against big teams again. It frankly wasn't good enough against Dortmund and we've got to put things right. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the upcoming game against Aston Villa this Saturday. It's going to be a really exciting game and hopefully we can put things right. If you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like, rate and subscribe to Arsenal Fan TV as well as my own channel, AFC Game by Game. And as always, thank you for watching guys.